no way I'm going to be ever be as good as these kids. And they were the sons of Martin Scorsese or the relatives of this person or studio head, and they were always connected. I knew nobody. I had no, knew nobody in the business. I had no connections. I came from a middle, middle class family. I didn't know anybody. And I became more successful than any kid that ever went to NYU film school. So why? Because I learned, I realized early on that I had to work hard. And let me tell you what, when it hit me, when I realized it. When I was in my math class in ninth grade, I think it was algebra, and I'm really bad at math, okay? And the teacher was going, okay, and then here's square, and then she was up on the board, and I go, whoa, 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 slow down, man. You're going too fast, you gotta slow this down. I gotta take these notes, you know? I wanna get a good grade, I was, I mean, I was at least trying, right? So I'm writing down exactly what he's saying, taking very clear notes, and I look over, and there's a kid sitting next to me, and he's like picking his nose or something. He's not even, He's not even paying attention. And I'm like, does this kid not care or something? Is he rich? What the hell's wrong with this kid? I mean, what, what's going on with this kid? And I'm literally, I don't understand. I keep looking over at him, and he's just not even paying attention, but kind of half paying attention. I'm, meanwhile, writing down every single thing that this guy is saying, this teacher's saying. I go home. I realize I, don't, I didn't absorb one thing he said. i got to read all the notes four times. Then i got to wake up in the morning and read the notes again. Then I go to class, I take the test, I get an A, okay? I worked hard. I look over at the kid who didn't write down anything, didn't study, didn't pay attention, and I look on his paper and it says A. I said, holy shit. <laughs> How the hell did he do that? And I realized that there are people out there smarter than me or better than me in certain things. But I can get that exact same A that he got. How? I just had to work. So I connected the dots. So when I'm in school and there were these 40 kids that, I'm not exaggerating, every single kid was better than me. If they took a vote or if they said, the winner's gonna get a million dollars to guess who out of these 40 kids is gonna be successful, 39 of the kids would not have voted for me, okay? And I would have voted for every other kid in the class. And I connected the dots, I realized, wow, these kids are better than me, so I'm gonna have to work harder. So what does that mean? Film school wants to be fair, so they only give you equipment from say nine to five every day because they don't want you to cheat. You know, I mean cheating it's not really cheating, but they don't want you to have a, a, a heads up over another student. I was the guy who would forget to bring the equipment back. <laughs> so when, I, when everyone was out partying or getting high or drinking or getting drunk or doing whatever with their friends, I was filming around the clock. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I'm not exaggerating. Any spare moment that I wasn't sleeping I was filming. Everyone else was having a good time, going to school during the week, filming during the week, and enjoying their weekends in college and enjoying their college experience. And I was saying to myself, and not because I wanted to be rich or famous or successful, I just loved it. And I wanted to be as good as the kids in my class. Those kids inspired me, but they were naturally talented. Somehow they knew how to, how to focus a camera. How the hell do they know how to focus a camera? I don't know, right? Or they know how to you know, light something, or they know how to use a dot, I don't know, they just knew stuff that I didn't know, and I thought, I'm really behind, I'm gonna catch up. So I think if you recognize your strengths and your limitations and your weaknesses, then you know, you get, it's like, I remember being six years old, and somebody said, what kind of music do you like, Brad? I'm like, I don't know. And then I went and started listening to like every type of music, Beatles and, and hip hop, and I'm like, and then I acquired a taste, so then when someone asked me that question, I knew what my interests were. So find something that you love, and how do you do that? By trying a lot of different stuff, right? Everyone in my class, if you ask them, all 40 kids, who here wants to be a director? All 40 kids went like this. And someone asked me a great question before I was interviewed, and, and they said, what regrets do you have? And one regret I have is, because I thought I'm just gonna be a director, I'm not gonna learn how to work the tripod or work the camera or do the things that you have to learn to execute, right? Because when you go into the real world, in the professional world, right, how are you gonna how are you gonna respect your boss if you work in a grocery store if he doesn't know how to do your job? Right? Or he doesn't know how to, because it, it's not about respect, at the end of the day it's about appreciation. If I appreciate what this guy is bringing to my film, he's gonna work harder, he's gonna give me more, he's gonna try harder. So it, it's something that you have to keep in mind is I thought, I'm just going to be the director, I'm just going to be the big man, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to carry a piece of equipment, I'm not going to set up a tripod. And, and, it, and it hurt me. But then, I got an opportunity. I got to do music videos. And let me tell you how that happened. I was 
very lucky because I met a guy who uh, some of you probably know named Russell Simmons. Okay? And I met him when I was 16 years old. He just started in the record business. But he was in the record business. I'm, I want to be a director. I don't want to be in the record business. So it wasn't helping me much. I mean, he was smart. And I was learning from him by shadowing him. And this is another big theme that I have for you guys. It's mentorship. Find somebody that, you, that can mentor you. And find somebody that you can ask questions of. Find somebody. Not you, him. But we'll make her get up and walk a little over. Find somebody that can mentor you because you think you know what you need to know, or you think you, you know more, you think you, you know the answers, but somebody older than you is really going to have the answers because they've been through it. They've done it before. My friends are all over the age of 80. If I can find friends that are 90s, I'm going to find them. Because they have a lot of experience to help me, to advise me, to guide me. I don't care if it's about a good love, life, anything. People get Surround yourself with people that are going to pull you up. And I believe it's older people who have experienced what you and who are doing what you want to do. Find that person if you want to be a photographer. Find the guy who's been taking pictures for 40 years and say, how did you do it? Or, you know, and these people that have the experience, they want to share their stories with you. They like to talk to young people. So all I do, even today, is surround myself with mentors. I surround myself with people who are going to give me advice and teach me something and tell me I'm, I'm stupid or I'm making a mistake or don't kiss my butt and say, you know, oh, you're the man, you're the man. And you start walking around believing it, and the next thing you know, you, you've lost everything. So, or you've lost perspective. Stay focused, stay, keep a perspective, and always have a sense of humor about it. Because at the end of the day, okay, um, you know, you have to love what you do, and you have to have fun. So, I meet Russell Simmons, and we, we had, what we had in common is we, all, we both like really pretty girls, right? So that was the, the extent of our relationship, because we, ch we chased after pretty girls all day long. That was all we did. And, um, you know, I respected him. He was up and coming in, 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 in the world of hip hop and stuff. And I always talked about wanting to be a director. And so he, I did a short film at NYU, and he generously had a screening for me. He went to have a little movie theater for 500 bucks and showed my film. The only people who can invite me were not people who were going to help me with my career, they were rappers. So LL Cool J came. Screening and everything, but I didn't know that it was eventually going to pay off. So we go to a public enemy concert. This is in 19, damn, 1992. I just graduated from NYU. And Chuck D says to Russell Simmons, I'm sitting right next to him, uh, we want Brett. We saw Brett's film, we loved it. We want Brett to do our next video. And Russell's like, Brett who? He's like, and I was standing right next to him. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, Brett, man, Brett, right, right here, right here. And he's like, what? He was so proud that one of his artists was asking for me, because Russell's the type of guy that's not going to push his friend, not his artist, to try to get me work or hook me up, right? You have to create your own opportunity. You might be my friend, but it doesn't mean I'm going to help you. You have to help yourself. So when you see an opportunity, you know, luck is when people say, you have a lot of luck. I said, yeah, I am luckiest MF in the world. You know why? <laughs> because luck is when opportunity meets preparation. I had an opportunity. I was ready for it, okay? And when Chuck D gave me that opportunity, I, I was like, I was ready. I was ready to do it. And I started doing music videos, and I loved it. And I was getting paid to learn. I was trying out all these different pieces of equipment, and I was like, I was, I was learning what I didn't learn in film school, because remember, I didn't want to touch the equipment. I didn't want to edit. I was just a man. I was just a big-time director. I didn't talk to actors. I don't, I don't want to bother with low director. And then when I did music videos and I started realizing that I needed to, to, to command some, I need to express the stories that I want to tell. These people weren't helping me because they knew I didn't know shit about how to tell those stories that um, I started to really learn and pay attention and do things that I normally wouldn't do in film school. So it's a, it's a lesson also to start, you know, if you, if you want to own a grocery chain, one day you're going to be the Start as a bad boy. Learn what every single person does in that field. So when you become the boss, or you are running stuff, you have people working for you that really know that you appreciate them, and you understand what their work is, and how they contribute to the whole picture, right? Because everybody has something 
special.